Hey guys, it's Sam here. I'm the technical product specialist here at Zedsphere, the cloud solutions provider for MSPs. So today we're going to be taking a look at the third video in the series of Ninja RMM how-to videos. We're going to be looking at patching. So we're going to be looking at how to set up patching for Windows and third-party software, how to install software using conditions and third-party within policy, how patching and updates look in the organization and device view, and also how to scan and apply for updates in between scheduled scans. So we're here in the dashboard, guys. This is the first view that you see when you log onto your Ninja console. So to access the patch setup, I'm going to go straight to configuration, then policies, and then Windows Workstation. So in other videos, we've covered the different areas within the policy editor. So in this video, we're particularly going to be covering the Windows patches and the software tab. So to enable Windows patches, it's as simple as clicking this button and that's it. Windows patches is set up for all of my devices attached to this policy. So you can see here that we've got two modes. So we've got a configure Windows updates. Um, you can see that this hasn't really got that many options to it. So it's just got download recommended updates and install on a schedule. Um, we recommend that you choose control Windows patch management because it's a lot more granular. As MSPs, you'll know exactly when your reboots are going to be. What happens if a user's not logged in and you want to reboot your scan schedule, your update schedule and any approvals? So you can see in the options here, we've got some reboot options if a user's logged in, if a user's not logged in. So if a user's logged in, we've got four options. We can prompt to reboot until the reboot's accepted. We can notify the user and then reboot. We can automatically reboot if we're feeling a little bit mean, or we can do nothing. We can wait between five and 60 minutes to do these. If a user's not logged in, we've got three options. So we can reboot immediately attempt to reboot until successful or do nothing. And we can set when we want this to happen. So we can do this daily or weekly and we can set a time. Now, the scan schedule. So as MSPs, this is probably one of the things that your eyes are going to light up with. So you can set when you want your customers to have their scans for updates for both Windows and third-party software. So there's no more calls from your customers saying, oh, my computer's crashed. Things are happening, I'm trying to have updates and I'm also doing work. That's a thing of the past. So we can set different schedules in here. We can do daily or weekly. We can select the weekday if we choose weekly. Um, we can select the time and the duration. If you leave duration to blank, this will just run until it's complete. So that's recommended. We can see the update schedule. So we can set this to daily, weekly, monthly day of the month or monthly day of the week. We can set a day and a time. And again, if we leave the duration blank, this will run until it's complete. On the security update approvals, you can see here that we've got four different categories for security updates. So we've got low, moderate, important, and critical. Now these are set to different levels of approvals at the moment. So we've got manual, which will put any of those patches within the pending category. We've got approved, which will put any of those patches in the approved category. And we've got reject, which will put those patches in the rejected category. So I'm going to leave those set to default for the moment. And then you can see here, guys, we've also got regular approvals as well. So we've got critical updates, regular updates, update rollups, service packs, feature packs, and definition packs. And we've got two different levels for those different updates. So we've got important updates and optional updates. Now, again, it's completely up to you as to which levels you want these to be approved, rejected, or manually accepted on. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that set to default. And you can see down here, we've also got some overrides as well. So if there's a patch that kind of worries you a little, or you're not quite sure whether you want it to install at a particular time without reading more about the patch, you can also um, create overrides as well. So you can kind of skip a patch if you will. So that sums up the Windows Patches tab. Let's take a look at software. So we've got exactly the same options on here. To enable it, just click that button. It's so simple. So you've got the reboot options, which are exactly the same, and the scan schedule and the update schedule and the overrides. Now there's one other difference. You've got an apply immediately tab. So if we choose to apply immediately, it takes away the update schedule as any patches as they come through will just be updated immediately. In products, if we click add products, we can see here that we've got a full list of products. So Ninja has over 140 integrated third-party software products. Now let's choose Adobe Air 
and we'll click save. In here, you can see that we've got Adobe Air with critical, recommended and install. So let's have a look at the edit. So what this means is any critical patches will be automatically installed. Any recommended patches will be automatically installed. If I click install, I've got two options, yes and no. If I click yes, Adobe Air will be installed on every machine. If I click no, Adobe Air won't be installed on every machine, but it will still manage those patches. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, you're kind of wondering, what's in those products? Can I add whatever I want to? Where are the rest of the products? Where's my specific product? So you can see here, there's quite a lot of products in here. So we've got things like 53 Microsoft products, um, Google products, and Adobe products. But you'll want to add something else. So let's go to conditions. Let's add a condition. So let's condition software. I'm going to put in an ad tag in here. You can call that whatever you want. Um, so that's an action install application. So here, guys, you can see that we've got the options. So you can select the architecture. So all 32 bit, 64 bit. You can put in the upload file if you've got it as well, which is really useful. Put in the application name so you can call any software anything you want to. Be careful. Um, and then obviously you've got the MSI URL as well. So if you've got a product that's available online for download, um, you can just literally link the URL MSI into this box here. You can add uh, command line parameters if you wish, and you can also run a system or as the current user. Now, obviously it depends on privilege level, so you could just leave that set to system. But that's the way to just install any piece of software that you wish across a policy on any of the devices. That's pretty cool, right? So we're going to take a look at how those patching areas look in an organization and a device view. So in an organization view, if we click on software, we get a full software inventory, as you can see here. So you can see every piece of software that's installed across the entire estate for this organization. You can see which platform it's on, the recent date, which is the, the last usage date. And then we've also got the platform date, which is the install and then device number. So we can see how many devices have that particular piece of software installed on them. If you click on the number, it brings up the list of devices. It's pretty useful. So guys, um, if we go into software, I can uninstall one of the softwares direct from here. I can also have a look at any pending patches, approved, rejected, installed, or failed patches. And all of these categories can be exported into a CSV file. So if your customer rings you up and says, MSP gods, I need all of my inventory sending over to me because I don't know what I have, you can just click that export button and boom, you've got a CSV with all of their estate on it. In the OS patches, um, we've got any pending patches come through here, approved, rejected, installed, or failed. And again, you can export all of those into a CSV file. So we're going to take a look at a particular device now. So you can see here, we've got the software inventory. It looks very similar to the organization inventory, only you've got a couple of different options on here. So um, in the organization inventory, you could see that we had um, a recent date and a device count. We don't really need that within an individual device view. We can still uninstall software direct from here. We still got any pending patches approved, rejected, installed or failed, and we can still export to a CSV file. In the OS patches, we've still got any failed, installed, rejected, approved, or pending. So that's really cool. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, guys, is show you what to do if you've got a patch that's pending or it's been approved in between your scans, or even you want to um, scan for updates. So you can do this by accessing the play button. And we've got a couple of different options. You've got Windows Update. You can do a scan and then apply updates. Or you can do Software Scan and then apply updates. Now, because we had an update um, and we had software flagged on here, I'm just going to go ahead and apply that. So you'll see once that's actually been actioned, um, this patch will just go onto the installed 
area right here along with the other patches so it's really cool guys so that sums up the patching video for the ninja rmm how to now that you've watched the video you might have lots of questions you might want more information about ninja rmm or any of our other products so on the screen right now you can see my contact details feel free to get in touch now here's the great bit we've got an msp partner program if you join our z sphere partner program you get some great great little uh, features and products. So you get 10% discount in addition to existing MSP discount prices. You get extended product trials. You get a subscription to Z Magazine, which is specifically made for MSPs. It's got lots of hints and tips in there. You get invites to VIP events and free product licenses. It takes 20 seconds to sign up. So head over to zsphere.com right now, check that out. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. So that was the third in the series for patching for Ninja RMM.